everyone so this is 3dx so this video is going to be slightly different from the normal type of video that i post uh, so it's going to have a, li a little bit of commentary here and this video is also a collaboration video between me and pietro hello everyone my name is pietro kioboro and today i'm pleased to collaborate with 3dx for the creation of this boat once that the model is ready I'll walk through the materials and the final render of this model, so if you want to see the finished result of this project, don't forget to check out my channel at Pietro Chioro. Now let's take a look to the modeling part. So he's going to be showing you after I'm done with the model, he's going to be showing you how to create the textures for the model. I'm really excited to see what he does with the texturing because I don't usually let anyone else texture my models, I usually do the whole thing. So I'm really interested to see how that turns out. Pretty sure it's gonna be really good because I've seen his models before, so that shouldn't be an issue. But anyway, for this video, I'm just going to give you a little bit of commentary here and there. Uh, it's gonna be obviously sped up at, like, like my usual videos, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing here. So creating a boat, really simple boat. Uh, I have a few references. I always recommend that people have references when they're creating something. So that can be pictures or that could just be concept art. And in this case, I'm using a few pictures, not necessarily basing the boat on a specific picture that I have here. I'm taking a few elements from the different boat uh, pictures that I have and creating the model from that. So as you saw there, uh, when I created, when I started, I started with a simple cube and then I just added a few loops and shaped it in the form of the boat. That's usually how I go about creating 2D models, is I always like to keep it simple. Uh, you don't really need to get really complex, especially when you're, ju you're just getting started with the model. Uh, you typically just want to get a sense of the shape of the overall thing. And so starting with a really simple cube and then just shaping it a little bit, it's usually how I start. I always start with the primitive, typically. And then just go from there by adding a few loops and extrusions and all that. So that's one of my recommendations is always start simple and don't overcomplicate things. And something that I do a lot is I take pieces from the original shape. Like you saw there, I duplicated the model and then extruded a small piece. And then that's a separate uh, model now and usually to make things easier for you when you create 3d models separating things is always the easiest way to do that because when you have a model that's welded it's a little bit more difficult to manage so if you can separate things uh, things that are logically separate obviously I would say go for it because that's typically the easiest way to to work with and you can always weld things back later if you have to so i always uh, like to separate things just because it makes it easier to work with so here i made these uh, pieces separate and like i said if you ever need to weld things back you can always do that so here i'm just looking at some of the references just to get a few ideas of what i'm of what i want to do so now what I'm going to do here is just separate the planks and like I said I just duplicated the model, detached the edges and then I'm uh, going to do a bevel here. I'm going to be a bit more high poly with this model, um, mostly because Pietro's models are usually high, somewhat high poly, not always, but I decided to just kind of add some bevels and go slightly higher poly than usual. Uh, my models are usually really low poly uh, game models. This one, I'm, I was thinking maybe it could be like a sub D render model, so that's why I'm adding some bevels. And it could always be used as a, as a high poly bake on a low poly as well. But this is going to be one of those cases where I'm making it more like a sub D render model, so it's going to have more bevels, be a little bit more high poly than, a, than if this was a game model, for example. Although it's still relatively low poly. So like I mentioned, I'm always extruding parts from the original shape and then using that to create a new model, a new separate piece out of that that I can use. 
just because like I mentioned it's a lot easier to do that than it is to to keep everything welded together and also since I like I mentioned this is going to be a bit of a higher poly model like a sub D type model that's why I decided to to keep the shapes separate So it's a really simple model, just kind of moving some of the edges by hand sometimes as well. And then looking at the sub D view just to see what it looks like. So almost done here, pretty much. Just need to add a few bevels. And like I said, this is super simple, uh, mostly geometric shapes. But you can see just how quickly this can be done. Like this took me about half an hour to 40 minutes, I think. Maybe less than that. Uh, mainly because it's really geometric, simple shapes. Just adding a little detail to the back there, just so that it looks slightly more interesting. And like I mentioned, I'm adding bevels because this is going to be a sub D render model. Not necessarily super low poly. Adding a few more details inside. And then I'm just going to add a little piece here where you can place the paddle on the boat or something like that. So almost done here. Uh, don't forget to go to Pietro Chov's channel. He's going to be showing you how to create a texture. Uh, the link is going to be in the video description. And uh, he has some really good videos, especially if you're a Blender user. He also has a lot of Blender videos. And then I'm just going to duplicate that piece. And then I'm going to add a few of these knobs here. Obviously this is, these are high poly. Um, if this was a low poly model you would just bake those in. But for high poly models it's not, it's not bad if you just add them as geometry. So adding those mostly by hand here. I'm sure there's a tool to snap them, but I don't mind doing it by hand. So here I'm just going to make a paddle, the paddle thing. And like I said, I always start simple. So let's just start it with a cube, added a few edges and just shape it. And there we have it. All right, guys. So this is the end of the video. So don't forget to go check out Peter Chef's channel. It's going to be showing you how to create a texture and render. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Don't forget to subscribe to his channel and I'll see you there. Like for many other works on 3 Act channel, the boot is awesome and I will have so much fun working on it. Thank you so much 3 Act for the collaboration and for having me in the channel. I hope we can do many other projects like that in the future. Moreover, working on this model, I decided to create a little short animation. So if you want to take a look to the final project, the final result, don't forget to check out my channel on Pietro Kiovaro. Thank you so much guys for the support and thank you so much 3DX for this hospitality. Have a nice day and see you soon. You see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment.
The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.